Welcome to the Better Business Podcast. I'm your host, Austin Zellin. Join me week after week as I interview high-level entrepreneurs on their journey to success, both in business and personal development. Each week presents new stories to learn from and new ideas on how to run a better business. Stay updated with all the guests we'll have by subscribing to this podcast. Alrighty, guys, welcome to another episode of Better Business with Austin Zell. And today we have Mr. Alex Morton, our guest, and he's going to be sharing about some of the business experiences that he's had. Now, he's had a very wide range of different business experiences. So we're going to talk about some of the ways that you can learn from what he's learned um, and apply it to your business. So, Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very excited for this interview. And um, why don't you just tell people a little bit about yourself? kind of how you got started in the entrepreneurial journey. And then as you've progressed, what things have you changed or maybe modified to be where you're at today? Yeah, well, definitely excited to be here. Uh, beautiful studio. Excited to meet you in person, you, man. You. Congrats on everything you've done, by the way. Thank you. I've thank been following you. following you on social, absolutely crushing it. it all over the world. Yeah. Um, and yeah, listen, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 34 today and I feel like I've been an entrepreneur kind of my, my whole life, like growing up in a small town in, um, yeah. Bexley, Ohio, right? I, I'm, okay. I'm in Ohio and it's like, we're right in the middle. So there's rich people over here, poor people over here, and we're right in the middle. And ever since I was like in third grade, I always had this, I guess, question in my mind, like what's the difference between these families yeah. that get to travel, you know, vacations all the time and drive nice cars and do awesome things. You know, these people that can barely survive and then us right in the middle. So I've always been mm. interested in you know, leadership, marketing, business, um, making, making money. Like at, at first getting started as an entrepreneur, you know, shoveling snow in driveways in Ohio yeah, and uh, raking leaves and stuff in the fall. Like I just wanted to learn how to make money, be my own boss. And that led me on a very um, crazy winding road journey. That's led me to over 77 countries around the world. And I'm just excited to be here today with you to help other people elevate and accelerate in their lives. Yeah. Awesome. So what was like the first business that you started in? Well, you know, shoveling, shoveling snow growing up in the winter in Ohio. Yeah. Rick and leaves in the fall, like I said. And then honestly, me and my, one of my best friends, David in high school, we had this idea. My last name's Morton. His last name was Edelstein. So we, we started M and E cookies. Literally we okay. baked chocolate chip cookies <laughs> in the kitchen, bagged them all up, put yeah. M and E on them. And we were slinging them at, at high school, like wow. in the hallways, making cat, you know, cash money. Yeah. Until the principal got upset and said, listen, you guys can't be like, you know, selling cookies <laughs> in school. But that was really the first, um, business I really ever started. And I, I guess I just fell in love with the idea of working for like myself. I always had this idea. Like, I don't mm -hmm. want to be told when to show up to work, when to eat lunch, when to go to the bathroom, when I could take yeah. my family on vacation. I wanted to always kind of just do my own thing. And it started you know, at a very young age. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So the cookie business was the first thing. And then as you progress to where you're at today, what's your main focus in business today? Yeah. So at, um, 18, I, I left, you know, nasty, nasty Ohio. I went to Arizona state university and okay. at 18, I saw a million dollar listing on TV on Bravo. Okay. Um, and th there were these young guys making money, driving nice cars, selling real estate. So at 18, I didn't have a car, but I took a, a cab to the real estate learning center in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. I walked in, I applied for my license. I did 90 hours in person and I filled the exam. I don't know, probably 13 or 15 different times, but I eventually got my real estate license at 18 and I found ways to list other people's properties mm -hmm. as my own. So it wasn't legal or illegal. It was like in the gray area, <laughs> but then I was getting inbound calls of people that wanted to, you know, rent these townhouses and condos and stuff. So I yeah. started making, you know, back then decent money uh, as a residential real estate agent. And then at 21 years old, I got in, uh, invited to a meeting and that's when my whole life changed. Like I met some people and they said, you can be your own boss, set your own time, set your own income, and you can earn residual income. And at first I thought it was too good to be true. Found out it wasn't. And then that's been my, I guess, home, my main focus now since 2011. Awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like you've tried a bunch of different things like many entrepreneurs and you've kind of found your own lane on uh, what you're good at, what you're talented at and where you found your calling to be. Um, and so what is like the, the thing that you enjoy about entrepreneurship the most? I know that for some people, entrepreneurship might be scary. They might think, oh, it's not 
for sure income. I'm not going to get paid for sure. I have to wait for a commission. I don't know if my right. business is going to work. I could fail. I might be embarrassed. People might think something of me. Um, and so a lot of people kind of hesitate to take that step. But I think if we can share with people why we like entrepreneurship, it might help them make that next step. Yeah. I th- I, the, the the immediate word that pops in my mind is freedom. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's something right now in, in this country and countries around the world, like it, it's, it's, it's in jeopardy. Like it really is. And there's yeah. a lot of powers that be that are trying to, you know, box us in into a certain type of life and lifestyle. So I think for me, yeah. The ability to be an entrepreneur, the ability to say, you know what, if I do this and I work this hard, I can earn a thousand a month, 5,000 a month. I can make a million dollars a month. Right. Yeah. So I think the ability to control and dictate my own level of success. And then honestly, I'm addicted to this feeling. Like I speak on a lot of stages all over the world. And it's like, no matter how many events I do or talks I give or whatever it is, like I'm backstage and I have this, like these butterflies. It's like the, yeah the nervous butterflies, but I'm, I'm addicted to the feeling. I think it's the excitement, the certainty, also the uncertainty. And it's just a lot of fun, man. It's a lot of fun to also impact other people uh, just like you do. Right. And help other people reach amazing levels of success. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's very much about impact. And that's where I found fulfillment, even in my business, where um, I was doing all these things on my own, but it's very lonely if you're just doing it on your own. And if you can help other people reach that same success, other people create that impact with their lives, it's just so much more fulfilling. And that's where I found passion in my business. So uh, one important aspect of all of this, though, is continuing to learn. Uh, one thing that has helped me grow my business exponentially is learning. And in fact, paying for learning. Like right. I've, I paid so much money. I remember the first time I paid somebody 40 K to coach me. I was like, Oh my God, this is like the craziest thing I've ever done. I thought I was never going to recover, but within like several months I made exponentially right. more than what I put into it. And I didn't even realize what exactly about it it was, but my attention was so focused on learning this skill set that I was paying to learn that it increased my business's revenue exponentially. Um, And so for me, that was a really, really big impact uh, or a big part of my journey. Um, And so have you seen learning be a a big part of your journey? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I was very blessed and fortunate to uh, meet Bob Proctor. Okay. I'm 21 years old. Uh, He saw me speak for the first time in Charlotte, North Carolina in front of 400 people. I'm Mm -hmm. making 400 bucks per month. And he saw something within me that I didn't see within myself. And mm. at the time, I didn't know who this guy was. Yeah. Like I spoke at this event and then he was like the big keynote guru guy. And when they announced him to come on stage, it was like this standing ovation. There were people crying in the audience. They had like copies of his book trying to get him to sign. And I'm like, yo, who's this? Who is this guy? Right. So yeah. <laughs> we built this like relationship, friendship. And yeah. um, he became my one of my big, my, my biggest mentor and coach throughout my journey. And he helped me mm. go from like 400 bucks a month to where I am today. But if I didn't invest in myself, like whether it was, you know, paying a couple thousand dollars to go to uh, an event, like uh, Bob used to do this event before he passed away in, uh, in LA. And I remember they were $8,000 uh, per table and you could bring like six, six of your team to this event. And I remember we would spend, you know, six figures on one weekend event people would be like, why would you spend a hundred grand on that? And I would say, would you spend a hundred grand to go make, you know, 5 million? Of course you would. Right. Yeah. So it kind of started there. And then obviously I, I've, I've sowed a lot of uh, money and seeds into different mentors yeah. um, along my journey. And I tell people all the time, it's like, listen, the people are busy, you know, like Ed Milet, right. Yeah. Um, I did, I did a little deal with him. We did an event in Miami together and, and I paid him some money for a couple of phone calls. And it's like, he's worth $800 million. Like he can't just go to Starbucks with, you know, uh, the guy down the street every Thursday or four for free, free mentorship. So sometimes if you want to really access certain levels of, um, learning and specialized knowledge, mm-hmm. you do need to pay to play and gain access to certain mentors. So I, I feel like without mentors in my life, there's no way I'd be sitting here with you with these results that I built in my life. Yeah, definitely. Um, so do you feel like mentors are your biggest source of learning or do you have other sources, maybe like books or podcasts or like, where do you like to find the best information? Or maybe it's a combo of everything. Yeah, I love, I love personal development. You know, like I have my main, um, you know, business direct, direct sales. I've been in for over a decade now and done, you know, yeah, 
very well. But over here, like I'm in the personal development space. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's, it, it, it's the books, it's the audios, it's the videos. I look at YouTube as a university. Yeah. Like I'm 21 years old. I got no money. Dude, I'm on YouTube university watching people in my profession making 80, a hundred. There was a guy making a million dollars a month selling coffee and he's teaching me on YouTube how to do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a big, I'm a big uh, cheerleader, I guess, for constant, never ending improvement, constant, never ending education. Like people are watching mm -hmm. this right now. Some of them are going to be watching this on YouTube. Yeah. For probably, I think it's free, right? Yep. To access on YouTube. So you could watch this podcast. You could take notes, you could apply them in your business and you can, you know, triple your, triple your money next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's the idea. I mean, there's so many free sources of knowledge. But um, I do agree with you on that point. When you're working with somebody like Ed Milet, worth $800 million, we want to be able to have a little bit of their time and to learn from what they've learned. And when you're working with people like that, it, I mean, every single time I've done it, it's been worth it. Yep. When I've had to pay somebody to learn something from them, because I could have, I could have done it for free on YouTube for, and it might've taken me five, 10, 20 years to learn that same information that I paid maybe 50,000 or a hundred thousand for. And I got it in 30 minutes and boom, my business just jumped there several years. Right. So it's like, you're pulling that result closer to you by paying. So, um, very, very important aspect there, mentors and even online education and stuff like that. Um, now as far as like your environment goes, um, I know I've been in environments, you mentioned Ohio, like I've been in environments where I feel like they were not conducive to growth. And so I had to strategically and purposefully put myself in an environment that I thought was going to make me grow, whether it's a high level room, whether it's an event, whether it's just like literally moving to another city. Right. Have you seen that play a role in your success? Massively. I mean, our, our environment is one of the big controlling factors of our belief system. Mm -hmm. So it's like whatever you see every day, whatever you hear every day, whatever you experience every day is going to build your environment. So yeah. it's like, and here's the thing, someone may be listening to this and they're like, well, yeah, it's easy for you. You're, you know, Vegas, Miami, Dubai, whatever. I live in this tiny little town. It's like, you can get on the internet. You can actually, you know, YouTube and Google five-star, you know, villas, uh, penthouse, uh, penthouses in Dubai, and you can do virtual tours and see luxury in abundance and start to program your mind for better success. Right. So, yeah. so for me, it's like when I went to Arizona, I purposely went to Scottsdale where the rich people were living. Yeah. And I remember asking people, I was like, yo, Austin, what, where, where do the rich people eat dinner on Friday night? Mm -hmm. And I talked to enough people. They're like, yo, they go to this one restaurant called Mastro city hall. So I'm like, okay, cool. I didn't have any money. I go to Mastro city hall Friday night. I walk in, I go to the bar. I don't have enough money to eat dinner there. I order a, a water from the bartender and I'm, I'm literally sitting there listening to rich and wealthy people. What are they wearing? What are they talking about? What are they eating? Right? So getting in the right environment yeah. is going to help you build a better frame for life, your belief system and what you believe about yourself. Cause the biggest thing for me about the environment was when I was around people and I knew like, oh, this guy's making a million a year, two million a year. I realized one thing, they're no different than me. Mm -hmm. I'm no different than them. And, and if this guy can do it, so could I. So people have got to change their environment, their friend groups, their relationships. If they, if they got to pay to get into the right event, whatever it takes, very important. Yeah. I think that's such a great example that you brought up about just going to Mastro's and ordering a water at the bar. <laughs> it's such a, it's a powerful visual because I mean, you did what it took to achieve success. You did everything that you needed to do in order to put yourself in that environment and just like feel it. A lot of it is just feeling it. Like, how does it feel to right. be here? How does it feel to be in this group of people? How does it feel to like even eavesdrop on their conversations? You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so that does play a big role. And I've had experiences like that in my life where like I was in a room, I was like, man, I should not be in this room right now, mm. but I'm listening. Right. <laughs> I'm taking no, listen, notes. We're, we're in Vegas right now, right? <laughs> yeah. We could be in the Wynn Hotel and yeah. the Encore Hotel, the nicest hotels in my opinion in, in, in Vegas. Yeah. Or you could go to Circus Circus down the street <laughs> for 18 bucks. It's going to Circus Circus smells differently yeah. than, the, the, than the win. Circus yeah. Circus food is going to taste different than yeah. the food over here at the win. Right. So it's yeah. very and anybody can take that and say, you know what? I can I can go do that. Maybe I can't drive a Ferrari or Lamborghini today, but I can go to the Lamborghini dealership. Mm -hmm. I can walk around the car. Mm -hmm. I can touch it. Maybe yeah. I can, the guy might let, let, let me sit in the car so I can feel the steering wheel. Like those are yeah. the things that I did. And a lot of people say, well, you know, that's like esoteric or that's too spiritual. I don't believe in it, but that that's the difference right there. 
Mm-hmm. Like the, the 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 people that I mentor and coach, I say go to the open houses in your city and state where they have million dollar homes. Mm-hmm. Go to where they sell the Ferraris. Go to the expensive restaurants. Yeah, and change your environment because it's a big deal. Yeah, and all of, a lot of that is just visualization. You have to visualize these things. I know, like I have certain goals in my mind or in my career that I have just like visuals of, you know, I'll get like photos of them. I'll print it. And my background on my phone is a plane that I want to buy, you know? And like, I see it every time I unlock my phone, every time somebody yep. texts me, I see that plane and I just see it and see it. And so for me, it helps me program my mind to see opportunities that will get me closer to that goal. Um, and I think one of the things that sometimes we like, we make a mistake on is we think that these goals are way too far, you know? And before I started seeing success in my career, I thought that like the, Lamborghini, whatever, it was like so far away. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe in like 20 years I can buy one. But I didn't realize I, I was really only maybe just a few months away. Right. A few months of success right. away, you know? Um, and so, yeah, it's very important to visualize those things. Um, now, are there certain people in your career that you would say inspire you, that you look up to, maybe how they run their business um, or even just their lifestyle, whatever? Yeah. yeah, one of my, well, you know, starting back, like when I was younger, I remember coming home from like school and watching like MTV. And I remember seeing like mm-hmm. the the yachts and the cars and the houses. And when you're 18 and have no money, it's like, that's what you want. You know, it's funny. It's like when you can't afford anything, you want to buy everything. Mm-hmm. And then like when you can afford everything, I go into stores and I'm like, dude, I don't even, I don't even care. I don't even want to buy this stuff anymore. Right. Yeah. But now at 34, you know, being married now over three years, um, I'm very specific on who I listen to because just because someone's got a lot of money yeah, doesn't mean they're a good person. Yeah. Like it is what it is. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, okay, the guy's got a jet and this and that, but like, okay, that's, that's one, that's one spoke on the wheel of, you know, life. Right. So for me, I get this very moment in my life. Listen, I look at a Grant Cardone and I see husband, father, business person, spiritual. I look at Ed Milet. I see husband, father, business person, Spiritual. So like Rob Deerdick's another mentor of mine. Right. And Mm -hmm. I look at, okay, like, okay, wife, kids. So I look at everything. I look at the health. I listen, if if I'm not willing to trade my lifestyle with that person, every aspect of it, I'm not going to listen. Yeah. It just, and I think too many young people, unfortunately, like low twenties, teenagers, it's like, oh, if, if, if one guy's got it, you know, if they got the watch, they got the car, they got this, they got that, they, they lock in. But the problem is, is you don't see what, what these people do behind closed doors. Like mm-hmm. what if someone's back there doing cocaine every night? Like I, you don't want to mm-hmm. be following somebody like that. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's important to find people that have what you want, but not just about the money and the cars and the, and the material stuff, but everything everything. Yeah. I think it's harder to find those types of people. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, and I think that sometimes people tend to take advice from people who are not where they're at, you know, especially if they're earlier on in business and like, oh, their uncle Joe said, you got to do this. And uncle Joe doesn't even have what he's trying to teach you how to do. Right. Right. <laughs> so they put themselves in these situations, but, um, yeah, so I think people understand the uh, importance of surrounding themselves with people that inspire them. So if they're maybe like, they're, they made their first million. They're pretty early on in business. They want to surround themselves with people who are at the next level. Where can they find these people? Is it just like masterminds or events or where would you say is the best place to find yeah, these people? Um, yeah, getting in the right rooms. And that right room might be a mastermind. Um, it might be a digital coaching live program. Yeah. Um, and events, like to me, events, like I, I really feel like at the big events is where you can make big decisions. Like mm. I think for someone to say, you know, I'm going to make my first million bucks. You can, you might be able to do that on zoom, but I, my personal, like when I went to an event in Vegas, 2014, and I saw a man on a stage making over a quarter million dollars per week. And I was physically in the room. That's when I made the decision to go make a million dollars a month. Mm. So, and there's a lot of access out there, yeah. especially in America. Like there's events going on every weekend. Yeah. Like all over the place, man. Like you yeah. got to just not be a lazy, a lazy ass and go drive, fly, walk, hitchhike, whatever you need to do to get your ass in the room. Yeah. Because it's like, if you don't do all oh, the tickets, 197, oh, this is too expensive. It's like, listen, man, you can't get caught up on, you know, a thousand bucks when you should be focused on making a hundred thousand bucks. And I mm-hmm. think so many people, okay, it's, it's New Year's. I want to change my life. I want to get in shape. I want to make more money, but you're not willing to put any, any skin in the game whatsoever. Yeah. And you're going to live the same year 
that you live this year, next year, and you're gonna do it over and over and over and over and over until you die, unless you change. And in order to change, you have to get, like you said, in the right rooms, shake yeah. the right hands, meet the right people, yeah. and get help. People, it's okay to it's okay to need help to get to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. And I think part of that is even admitting that you need the help. Um, and so, yeah, there's something so powerful about being in that room. And I I know exactly what you mean about large events. Like you can you can do it on Zoom, you can do it at a small event or in your living room or bedroom, whatever. But that energy in that room, in a big room, to make those big decisions, sometimes that's what you need. You know, Absolutely. and I've had some very impactful moments like that in my own career where I was in a, at a big event. I, I made a big decision. And because of the commitment that I made in that setting, it caused me to follow through with it. So uh, that was very important for me. Now, um, as far as like achieving your full potential, I think that can be multifaceted, whether it's financial or career wise or family or spiritual, whatever it is. We have our full potential. Now, do you believe that we need continuous growth for that? Or do you think we could just kind of coast into it? Like, let's say, for example, we build something and we just kind of let it ride. Will we reach our full potential or do we need to continue developing purposefully? I think you need to continue developing for sure. Because, you know, when you break down like happiness, yeah. I look at happiness equals growth. Growth equals happiness. Like I'm my happiest mm. when I am growing, when I'm yeah. either... Tr li lifting more weights, uh, trying to lose body fat, waking up early, whatever I'm doing, like I feel the most alive when I'm doing something that's making me a better human in one of my, you know, main areas of focus in my life. And, and I'll tell people, listen, and listen, my, my happiness level going from, let's just, I don't want to use like present day numbers because it doesn't matter, but going from like, okay, uh, net worth $10 million to net worth 13.3. I'm telling you right now, and you may agree, your happiness doesn't 10 X because you have $2 million more in the bank. Once mm. you buy a nice watch like that and have a nice car, buy first class or be able to charter jet. Well, okay. It's like at that point, you, you should switch the mentality to go to, to, to service anyway. Mm -hmm. to go make the world a better place because the world needs it, right? Yeah. So if you're not growing, I believe you're dying. And mm -hmm. I don't want to die anytime soon. Yeah. So you better keep growing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, 100% agreed on that. Um, I don't think there's a like a place that you can be just stagnant. And some people think that they could just pause and they're like, okay, I'll just kind of chill here. You know, but it doesn't happen. You're either deteriorating or growing. Absolutely. You know, so um, yeah. So, you know, there's people listening to this episode and they want to create a better business for themselves. So what are some top areas that you've seen in your business that once you address those areas, maybe it was sales, maybe it was marketing, maybe customer experience that helped you create a better business. And maybe they can learn something from that to apply to their business. Well, one of the main things was up until the first COVID lockdown, I was on a plane every 72 hours. Like at that point, it was probably 65 different countries. And I remember when they, we were in Miami and they said, no more traveling. Oh, well. And I, I mean, I was in the level 10 panic. Oh my gosh. I actually called Bob and I got his opinion on it. And I switched from everything, physical, 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 being in the room, being in the room, being in the room to scaling digitally. So mm. I would say no matter what your business is, most likely you could scale digitally and you could probably do it from the comfort of your, of your home. Yeah. Right. So I think number one for us, when we actually forexed our company sales, yeah. it was during COVID mm. and we went from everyone flying around the world, you know, physically being everywhere to getting on a Zoom call. Man, I've been on Zoom calls with 10,000 people. Like, where else can you do that? Like 2023 is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Going into 2024, it's like dude, you, the power of your phone, you can make money on your phone. So I think the biggest mental shift people got to make is like, don't try to make it all about physical, 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 brick and mortar. What can you do to scale? Like I was getting my hair cut this morning. I told, I told my barber, he's a celebrity barber. He's cuts all these UFC guys out here. I'm like, dude, you can make a masterclass on how to become a celebrity barber. Yeah. And then you can make money every night you're sleeping. That's thinking smarter, right? Yeah. Working smarter. So I think the biggest theme there is sit down in a quiet place and think about your business, put it all out in front of you. How can I be how can I work smarter next year instead of just harder? Mm -hmm. And you can come up with different verticals, different avenues of, you know, expansion in your business. And a lot of times it's going to take you less effort because of the use of technology. Yeah, definitely. Technology is a beautiful thing. And that's one thing that I remember from my college career uh, is like 
one of my economics professors was talking about what technology is. And it's basically the idea of technology is having the same amount of input, but exponentially more output. Mm. It was like a multiplier, you know? So if you have something good, you then leverage technology to scale it further. And um, to your point about adding products to your product suite, it's all about stacking more and more value for your customer. You know, like your barber, he's already cutting hair, but he can also teach others how to cut hair. And so that creates more income for his business. Um, and it's so important today. Um, and one thing that you mentioned is about going digital. So do you think going digital is providing a digital product or do you mean like social media presence or tell us more about that? I think, I think building a brand is, um, one of the most impactful things that every person can do at this very moment in time. And I was lucky yep. because I started making selfie videos when I was traveling the country and then obviously the world building my businesses in 2012. So I was like stacking mm -hmm. and they're still on YouTube and old Facebook videos, you know? So like I kind of was doing that before a lot of people started doing that. And that, that allowed me to become known, not worldwide, but known in my, my industry. Yeah. So it allowed me to more seamlessly and effectively and more simply bring in more leaders, more customers, you know, into the different businesses that I've been able to, uh, mm. you know, grow and scale over time. So, um, yeah, you got to get on social media. You got to be building a brand. These podcasts are phenomenal ideas because this, this is why we could post something right now and we are building friendships with tens of thousands of people all over the world at yeah. the exact same time from the comfort of our house or a studio. Like yeah. it is incredible. Like people got to stop thinking, oh, I'm only in Columbus, Ohio. This is my only, this is the only place I can make money. No, you have to start thinking globally because listen, we, you travel a ton internationally, man, we can get anywhere in the world in 16 hours. Yeah. You know, LA, LA to Dubai, baby. I'm there in 14 hours. It's like, you can, we can go anywhere tonight and have breakfast tomorrow anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. So like, if that doesn't wake you up at some degree to say, you know, I got to get on social media and build a brand, then yeah. I, I don't know what is. Yeah, 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 definitely. So you feel like building that personal brand is one of the most important things you could do for your business. It's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be. And so is there a social media platform that you prefer? Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or are you just yeah, we're, omnipresence? I've posted every day on Instagram for probably, I don't know, six or seven years. Okay. Um, we, we, we should be on others. We should be more like omnipresent. We got, you yeah. know, 70,000 people on YouTube or whatever, but we don't focus on it as much. But um, I think Instagram for me has the avatar of the customer I'm more so looking for, mm -hmm. right? Like I, I just think Instagram, like you go survey people walking around Miami or LA or Vegas right now. And you're yeah. like, Hey, what's the last app you were on? I still feel today. Oh, Instagram, Instagram is going to, I know TikTok's <laughs> number one, yeah. but I still think Instagram is the most opened application for our quote unquote generation right now. Yeah, definitely. I think the most people's demographic or target demographic is going to be on Instagram. And that's a very, very important tool. Uh, even in my business. I mean, I've grown my business exponentially through Instagram um, and it was organic at one point and then I switched to ads and, you know, it just kind of flowed with that same momentum, organic and then ads with Instagram. So um, yeah, very interesting stuff. So um, for people who are um, maybe just starting out building their personal brand, um, how, what kind of content schedule should they be on? Should they be posting once a day, twice a day, five times a day? I would say start with once a day because if you start telling yourself like, oh, I need to post, you know, 10 stories a day and post three times per day, I think you might just overwhelm yourself yeah. a little bit. Um, so I think posting, you know, one time per day, you know, at least six days per week. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, Alex, what do I, what do I talk about? What, what, what do I post? I, I think people should really like decipher what are my core four or what are like some of my like buckets? Like, what am I, what do I feel comfortable talking about? What am I passionate about? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, like what turns me on emotionally and energetically to where like, I'm not going to get bored mm -hmm. talking about certain things, you know? And, and luckily for like us, one of those is obviously, you know, success and growth and personal development. So I think mm -hmm. everybody out there, whether you have $10 or $10 million, yeah, there are things that interest you. And there are other people out there that are also interested in what you're interested in, man. Like it is yeah. what it is. Like, I don't care how small you think your, your niche is. There's 8 billion people on the planet. There's some other, you know, nut jobs out there that like what you <laughs> like anyway. So focus on yeah. what you like and go all in on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So by core four, you mean like your four interests that you want to talk about? Yeah, like I, I for me, you know, financial education, success, uh, the spiritual laws of success, like the law of attraction, different things like that. Mm. 
And then I'm, I'm kind of like leaning towards now. I don't know. I guess I'll call it freedom fighting. I don't know. Like the world has made me and a lot of other people so mad. Like I can't hold myself sometimes mm -hmm. and, and I'm not a political person. I think it doesn't matter what I think, but the point is, is that like, I'm exposing the truths out yep. there. Like when you look at a school and a jail and a hospital, there's lots of similarities between those three physical facilities. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, the lights are dim, they're, the windows. It's like we, we've been conditioned to go out there and fail, be unhealthy, get addicted to big farmers medications. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole right now on, on, the, <laughs> on this podcast, but yeah. one of my buckets is like trying to help people wake up to the idea of stop relying on governments. Yeah. Rely on your own intuition, common sense, and your own thinking. And then you can make good decisions for you and your family. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm a big fan of this fourth bucket that you have. Um, so what are some things that you're doing to kind of combat that or make the world a better place in that bucket specifically? Yeah, I would say number one, be, being vocal about uh, the things that I believe. Okay. Um, and one of the things that I believe is the government, who no matter who's in office, is not going to come to your front door or my front door and offer to help and protect and, and keep our family safe. Mm -hmm. um, so I think personal responsibility is one thing everybody should be looking into. Yeah. Number two, health is big, man. Like a couple of years ago, I was 27% body fat, 222 pounds fat, you know, not doing good. I'm not in a perfect, I'm not perfect shape today, but I'll tell you what, 15% body fat is healthier than 26.8% body fat. Mm -hmm. So I think like, you know, getting in the sauna, taking these cold showers, supplementation, yeah. Right. Like that's a big, cause this is the only place we can live, man. Like mm -hmm. you give some of these guys out there in the middle East, it's like, you know, they're worth a hundred billion dollars, but you know, they could have heart failure tomorrow. The, the hundred billion heart failure doesn't care how much money you have. Mm -hmm. Like, so I think, I think health and well being is, is, um, uh, is a massive one. And then another one for like this whole freedom finding thing, honestly, is becoming an entrepreneur. And mm -hmm. it could just be a little side hustle at the start, but you have got to have something. If you're a nine to five right now, nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. What are you doing? from six to nine at night? Are you in 15 fantasy football leagues or are you learning a new skill uh, on the internet on how to make some money on yep. your phone? So if it does get a little bit worse next year, which it probably will, it's mm -hmm. an election year. I'm a little frightened by it. A lot of people are, you know, talking about different things taking place. Can yep. you, can you stay healthy, protect yourself and protect your family for what's to come? And if the, if the answer is I can't right now, make some improvements in your life today and start to move yourself in a better place. Yeah, definitely. So you touched a little bit on health. Is there like a specific protocol or routine that you follow in order to keep your health in check? Or maybe some influencers that you kind of look up to when it comes to your health? Yeah, so um, a lot of people don't know this, but I met Gary Brecca mm -hmm. um, when he when no one knew who Gary Brecca was mm -hmm. in Naples, Florida. And I was actually the person that connected Gary to Grant Cardone. Oh, wow. which started, you know, everything we see today, which is absolutely phenomenal. One of my best friends, That's right? Awesome. And I basically listen to what he says, man. Gotcha. I mean, honestly, he's the one that put me on different protocols. I did his gene test for a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. And I, he, he changed my life, my wife's life, my family's life, a lot of my friends and business partners' lives. Yeah. Um, and, and, when, and, when you, and when you focus on your health, like when you get in better shape, dude, you make more money anyway. Yeah. You respect yourself more. You have more confidence. You have more energy and everything gets better. So, yeah. um, you know, Gary is definitely somebody that I think everybody should at least listen and, and apply some of the things, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've done his gene test as well and the blood test and everything. So uh, it's definitely really cool stuff. I love what he's doing. So do you do like cold plunges as well? We don't have a cold plunge in our Vegas spot and our, uh, our Miami home will be done next month. And we're going to put uh, a cold plunge on the balcony. Okay. So I am awesome. And I don't like the cold either, man. Like <laughs> oh, you, you, <laughs> even a freezing shower, dude, it sucks, but yeah. you, it's like, I'm not, I don't take drugs, but it's like <clears throat> whatever being high is, I'm sure a cold plunge or a cold shower, I'm mm. way higher than the other dude on the street. Like it feels amazing. <laughs> the rest of my day is freaking on fire. Yeah. And I can go out there and produce results. Yeah. So uh, what would you say are some top skills that people can um, look to improve when it comes to building a better business? So they might want to improve their business, maybe the finances, the sales, they want to make more money, they want to deliver better to their clients. What are like top three things that they could focus on going into 2024 to run a better business? Build a real big vision for what you want this business to turn into in the next 12, 24, 36 months. Okay. And then take that vision, number two, set 
clearly defined specific goals. Like it's easy to say, I want to be a millionaire. Okay. Yeah. Let's get to a thousand, thousand bucks a month first. Mm -hmm. What's the plan to a thousand bucks a month? This mm -hmm. is the plan to a thousand bucks a month, right? So there, there, there are these different levels on your way to this making milestones. A, a million bucks, right? Milestones, right? Yeah. And then number three, which could be the most important one, surround yourself with great people. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, I've got people like on our team that are way more, uh, more intelligent in, in, in certain things than me. Like yep. my strengths are over here. I wanted to, I want to hire and bring on people. Their strengths are way different things. Like the automations, the, I got a guy named Logan. He's like my VP of everything. Right. Yeah. Uh, funnels, automations, the webinars, the upset, all that. He takes care of that. And I do what it is I do. And who, t who told me that years ago was Eric Thomas, ET, the hip hop preacher. He said, I do what I do. And that's all I do. I have a team that does everything else. So I can yeah. focus on getting better at what I do. So I can go from good to great over here. And then they can go over there and do everything else. I think too yeah. many people... I don't know what you call it, solopreneurs or whatever. They try to do everything on their own all the time. And I, I think you're wasting time by doing that. Absolutely. And you're not reaching your full potential. I mean, it's, you kind of have to get over that hurdle of, oh, I'm the only one that can do these things. But realistically, you could hire somebody that does it almost as good as you. Um, and that's how you scale a business. Nobody's ever going to do it as good as you, but there are certain things that other people are better at and they'll do better than you. Absolutely. And there's certain tasks that even if you're the one doing them, somebody can do them almost as well as you can. So um, that's the key to scaling for sure. And so when you're uh, putting together a dream team, where do you find these people? Are they just finding you? Are, are they coming to you because of your brand or your company or your vision? Or are you out like getting referrals or hiring on websites? Yeah, I think my, my strategy might be a little bit different. Like I like yeah. to keep the, the people that knew me when I was going through the super tough times, yeah, it kind of stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Like, like Logan is the one that runs my whole brand on the back end. When I kind of like lost pretty much everything, that was the phone call I made. And he let me sleep in the guest room for a couple of nights in Phoenix. When I returned my car, I broke my lease. I left the girl I was living with at the time. I, I made almost 2 million bucks in my career at that point. I was down to, you know, under, under a hundred grand to my name in times were super tough. Like that was the guy that put me there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, for me, like I, I, I enjoy the idea of having some of these day ones, you know, with me, my, my videographer yeah. that helped me do, um, all these different videos for the last, you know, close to, I don't know, eight years. You know, he was also the guy that when I, I couldn't afford to put him in his own hotel room back in the day in Europe and we're sleeping in like a hundred dollar per night hotel room. So I think it's, it's cool to go from that to then it's like staying in, you know, the Burj, uh, what, uh, Burj Al Arab mm -hmm. in Dubai. Right. Yeah, so yeah. for me, it's like, I, I like hiring and, and, and having the people around me that knew me from like day one. Uh, but if you're, if you're not in a situation where you can do that, I think maybe just putting on your story, Hey, looking for a videographer, looking for a marketing guy. Right. And let them yeah. send over their resumes or their past work. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Get on social media. I don't think you need to get on, you know, you're not going to open up a phone book. Get on yep. social media and seek out really good talent. Yeah, absolutely. And then they already know kind of your brand and the things that you do. So it's a little bit better when you have somebody who's already familiar coming into your business instead of having to hire somebody from scratch and trying to teach them everything like, hey, this is who I am. This is the story, like everything. Right. You know, it's just a little bit tougher. So I've seen even in my own business when I'm hiring somebody, um, people who are familiar with the brand are very effective from day one most of the time. So um, definitely building a, a powerful team is very important. And um, something that you said is like about those people who have stuck with you through the hard times. Um, you know, in business, there's always ups and downs. There's always, you know, as entrepreneurs, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody does things that maybe weren't the best thing to do. Um, and sometimes we are in situations where we do lose. Um, and so seeing those people who are loyal, even through the tough times, I think is so important. So have you kind of seen that in your career where, um, I think it's, it's really easy for everybody to be friends with everybody when you're doing well, you know, and then when times aren't so well or aren't going so well, uh, that's when you see the true character come out. Absolutely. In some people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my first company, I became the youngest and fastest ever to make, um, a million bucks. 
Like, yeah. you know, we like went really, really crazy big. Like uh, my face was on the side of the Phoenix Suns basketball arena. We were in magazines. Wow. Like, it was like a crazy situation, <laughs> right? That's awesome. So we went from like there down to here. And it's interesting because up here, everybody wants to hang out. Everybody wants to party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, dude? What are you doing this week? Oh, I got tickets to this. Oh, come hang out. Come to this. Come to that. And then when you're down here, people aren't even, they wouldn't call you back. Yeah, they didn't yeah. text you back, except for a few. <laughs> yeah. Right? So yeah. you're absolutely right, man. It's like, listen, when, when times are good, everybody, everybody wants to be around. When times yeah. are tough, people, it, it, it's, it's very interesting. Like you think people are there for you, but when you go through a tough time, the people that actually pick up the phone, text you back, th those are, those are the ones that are like lifers. Yeah. You know? And if you look at Kevin Hart, who I've studied because he's a very successful, you know, individual, mm -hmm. you know, like his like plastic cup boys is like his like team name. And these are guys that have, they know, they've known each other for, you know, over 30 years. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you're winning, everyone's there. When, when you're losing, you know, 2% are still there. So then when you go win again, keep those 2% with you yeah. and that's it. Doors closed, man. Like I, I, I tell people all the time, like I'm 34, like I'm 34, right? It's like, I don't need like, random new friends. Yeah. Like I can have new friends that it makes logical sense. We have mutual interests. We're successful. We're doing cool stuff. We can travel together, whatever. Yeah. But it's like, you get to a certain age and point in your life. It's like, listen, I, it, it's hard to go meet somebody because then they, oh, they, they got a Rolls Royce truck. They got a Rolex. They got a pad. They got this. They got that. You don't even know who's, who's just trying to use you, leverage you, abuse you, and who yeah. actually is a genuine human being towards you. So yeah. I think something that everyone listening right now, if you're not yet there, build those friendships and relationships mm -hmm. before you become a multimillionaire. So yeah. when you become a multimillionaire, you know who to call when you want to go pack out your jet and, and travel to Turks and Caicos with genuine friends. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that sometimes people look at bad times or tough times as like, oh, it's horrible. But I think it's actually a blessing in disguise because you get to see who were the real people? Who were the loyal people? Who were there for the right reasons? Absolutely. Um, and like you said, bringing those people the next time you're on your next bull run, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, you bring those people with you and you take them on the jet. So, uh, yeah, really cool stuff. So, um, one last thing that I wanted to talk about is, um, the importance of, um, analyzing your business at strategic times. So how often do you do like a business analysis, maybe like once a year or quarterly, um, to recalibrate and look at what areas may need improvement or, um, is it just a constant thing for you? Like, what's your opinion on all that? Yeah, well, I've got an app on my phone. I click it and it shows me um, company sales volume. It shows me the top five countries of the sales volume. Okay. And then it shows me how many new customers were enrolled, how many customers left. Yeah. Um. So it shows me everything. Mm -hmm. So like I, I'm, I'm clicking that probably once a day to be quite, I, I don't know if that's a healthy thing to do, but I'm doing <laughs> it. It's on my phone. It's like Instagram. Boom. It's open. Right. Yeah. So for my, you know, specific business, a lot of it has to do with leadership. So if I feel like we went from 20 committed, amazing leaders to like five, I'll turn on this idea in my head. I got to go recruit new hungry people, willing, able, teachable, coachable, coachable people. So I'm always looking at like, Who's constantly in the field? How many active people do we have making 10 grand a month, 25, 25 a month, 100 yeah. grand a month and, and more so? So it's like, I'm auditing. I'm constantly auditing. Also, we have chats, like like company chats on WhatsApp. So yeah. I can get on there and scroll. Who's, who's responding? Who's commenting? Who's opening these emails? Who's yeah. looking at what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. So I always kind of have, I guess, my thumb on the pulse yeah. and the heartbeat of the business. And again, with technology, there's lots of ways you can utilize different programs and apps to always see kind of what's going on in your company. Yeah, definitely. So what are like the most important metrics that you're tracking? How many people are successful and like which countries and stuff like that? Yeah. So, um, when I do travel and tour, I go to where I know they can get at least, you know, a thousand people in a room. Okay. So it's like before like the big European tour, um, it's going to be summer 2024. Like I'll get on and I'll be like, okay, what are our top 15 European countries? Okay. Right? That's where I'm going to spend my time, money, energy, and effort yeah. to go into those markets, to mm -hmm. train them, to do presentations, to do seminars, you know, events and all these different things. Right. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm always looking for where, like I call it new, new pods of momentum. Like where are the most new people making mm -hmm. two, five, 10, $25,000 per month. That's yeah. where I need to go. There's already a fire there. 
so then I can go into the market and I can dump gasoline on there um, and, and blow it up even more. Yeah. Right. So I guess the metrics for that is, you know, new, new sales volume, new leadership, Mm-hmm. Um, and, and how many, how many people are making, how many people are making money in the market, man? Like yeah. that's the new, that's, that's the next generation of leadership in our company. Yeah. And I think there's a really important uh, mindset behind what you're talking about. And that's focusing on where the wins are. You're not focusing on the worst countries. You're not going there trying to start something new. You're looking at where people are already winning and you're pouring gasoline on the fire. Like you said, because um, doubling down on our strengths is sometimes one of the best things that we can do in business. Instead of trying to focus on all the problem areas, we focus on the success and we continue that momentum. And that allows those, sometimes those problem areas to go away uh, naturally through that momentum. So focusing on wins rather than like trying to mitigate the losses, uh, so to speak. So yeah, really cool stuff. Um, and yeah, anything else you want to share with people um, so they can improve their business, run a better business in 2024? Yeah, I would say, listen, you know, it, it all comes down to decision. I call it the three D's. You've got decision, you've got desire, and you've got direction. And I think those yep. are simple things. Everyone can be, okay, decision, desire, direction. Like if you just took those three into 2024, yeah. you can change your whole life, man. Change yeah. your business and change your life. It's like you have to make a decision that this is who I'm becoming. This is where I'm going. This is how I'm doing it, right? Then it's like, okay, I have, like, I guess, the strategy and the plan but now it's like, what, what what motivates me? What inspires me to go out there and actually make it happen? Yeah. And, and I teach people to build a burning level of desire. Number one, what do you want? Number two, who do you want to help? Get clear on those two answers and objectives. So you can kind of see where it is you're going and the people you want to go, you know, bless and impact and help go to the next level. Yeah. And then the direction. It's like, and that goes back to mentors. Yeah. Like whatever business you're doing, there's somebody probably that has already done it. What did they do to go from zero to a million, a million to 10, 10 to 100, 100 million to a billion? Yeah. Whatever they did, you can go do it too. That is what I've done my entire career. Yeah. Okay, I haven't made 100 grand yet. Okay, what do I do? Okay, this is what that guy did. I'm gonna do it, got 100 grand. Then it was a million and then it goes to go. So, so now it's like, okay, to build to build a multiple nine figure net worth, I gotta go learn from people like the Rob Deerdicks. The and my let's the great call, people that have 200 plus million dollars in a bank account or yeah. in assets. Yeah. It's all out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. People Absolutely. overcomplicate success so much. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so vocal and I get so animated naturally because it, it pisses me off to see so many people struggle. Mm-hmm. It genuinely makes me mad. Yeah. And you tie that in to what the world's doing and the governments and all that. It just pisses me off. I want to help as many people as possible, just like you. Yeah. Get Freedom, whatever freedom means to you, mm-hmm. let's go get freedom in this next year. Yeah. Awesome. I love that, man. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you, Alex. And you've shared some really uh, valuable things for people, you know, about building your brand and uh, focusing on those areas that are already winning to double down on your winners um, and keep that momentum going. And most importantly, making that decision. Um, and having a clear vision for where you're going. So thank you so much for joining us. Guys, if you're watching this today, um, make sure you uh, follow Alex. Where can they find you on Instagram? Um, yeah, Alex Morton Mindset on Instagram. Um, and then winwitham.com is like the new like mm. portal for everything. Awesome. Well, you guys heard it directly from him. Uh, he's seen a lot of success and he shared some very, very valuable insights for you guys to apply for your business as well. Uh, thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you all in the next episode.